tap it now. Uh, rotate that around for us a bit more, please, Pete. Yeah, go on then. As we come round. Never keep a dog and bark yourself. <laughs> so this is my favourite view now. My favourite view is the 3D recon. I love it. The thing hey, was I'll that one... There. Stop there, because I was just sat there tapping like a fucking dick. <laughs> I'm going to tap you every time you do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go in three, two, one. You may have seen our first video, which talked about using x-rays to assess tibial plateau fractures. The fact is, the majority of the time, you're going to need some further imaging in the form of a CT. So today, the purpose of this video is to talk to you about assessing Schatzka 2 lateral split depression fractures using CT scans. Great. And here's the first up. We will start with a plain x-rays just because that's where you always start. But usually in the trauma meeting scenario, you whiz on quickly, show us the scans, show us the scans. I'll show you the x-rays first though. Uh, starting off with that one on the right, I think we've got a pretty good lateral. Uh, you've got the uh, the two tibial condyles, are, uh, femoral condyles rather, are, are reasonably symmetrical, and therefore I think we're calling this a good lateral or a decent lateral. Uh, acceptable. It's slightly rotated. It is it's slightly it's rotated. Acceptable. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. And on the lateral view, I'm seeing uh, a, a an area of bone, like an island of bone, if you like, down here, mm -hmm. and the medial tibial plateau running down here. So Sides medial tank. side clear and just going back we can see here there's a lateral side of fracture a large fragment with some what appears to be some quite good looking bone there and the last thing that we can see is that the tibial width there is pretty good but here it's widened so you've got this uh, slight widening and a depressed uh, split depression Schatzka 2. Absolutely and you've got your split coming in there. Great okay so that's the that's the plain films let's have a look at the CTs. When you first open up a CT you're presented with quite a lot of options and quite a lot of windows. The key images are the four here that are displayed. We've got the uh, coronals, the sagittals, so coronals, sagittals, axials, and then your th 3D reconstruction. So th we're going to just uh, work our way through these and see what it is that you can learn and, and harness from each one of those. Great. Which one should we start with? I tend to start with the coronal, uh, but everyone has their favourite, and it doesn't matter necessarily which order you go in. Everyone has a system. Yeah. I tend to start with the coronal. And what does the coronal tell you? Let's let's start with him. Here he is, um, and of course. Parts of it look a bit like your AP, don't they? Mm. You've got all those those features that you talked about earlier on. You've got the the, the widening of the diameter right there. You've got the, uh, the medial side looks okay. You've got the um, uh, and you've got the, the the depression. But as you roll through, you can see the, uh, the the depression becomes very very clear. The thing I get from the coronal is uh, you can see the split coming through anteriorly. This is the front of the knee joint, and as I roll through, you see the comminution in the notch and then the lateral blowout, and of course, the depressed part of the tibial plateau. This is what I would call one of those quite nice tibial plateaus because it looks like it's, it's depressed as one big island of bone with some impacted subchondral bone underneath that. Yeah, and you, and you would expect that you could hoik the whole thing up and you should be able to hold it. You should be able to hold it, that's right. It will, it, will, it will hold a screw, that's yeah. right. So what does the coronal give you? Answer, it shows you, it shows you the blowout of the condyle, or if you're on the medial side, it shows the drift of the of the um, of the femoral condyles, um, and it shows you the personality of the lateral depression. In other words, whether it's one big chunk of bone or whether it's uh, lots of small fragments. And it just gives you an idea of the angulation of this of the articular surface. Absolutely. Okay, so I then tend to go to the sagittal. Me too. AP and lateral. Here's our, here's our lateral, and if you start, our, our, our sagittal rather, and again, this emulates the lateral view, and as we roll through, you can see, I'm starting on the medial side, so the medial side is absolutely fine, because the fingers are there he is. I'm coming into the notch, we know there's always a bit of combination in the notch, don't be freaked out by that. Get past it, get past the notch, into, here we go, the lateral side. And what you see, what, what do I get from the, from the sagittal? The sagittal tells you two things really. Number one, it shows you um, what orientation your depression is in. Sometimes it's down a bit more anteriorly, sometimes a bit more down posteriorly. It gives you an idea of, if you were to punch this up, 
Where would your punch have to go? A little bit further towards the back or a little bit further towards the front? So yeah, so you'd be, you'd be running slightly there, I'd suggest. That's right, slightly posterior, exactly. Because you want to lift the back up, but you want to get the whole thing up, but otherwise still this quite will, central. Otherwise, this will end up coming up uh, sort of front first, won't it? It'll end up, it'll end up uh, coming up on, on this side a bit more uh, than this side. So you, you want to bring it up and, and uh, when you're punching stuff up, actually, what tends to happen is you punch it up and it kind of goes like this, and then you you have to move your punch there and it goes yeah. and, and then the it goes rrr, 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 until it until it comes through. But the sagittal, what does it give you? Answer: It gives you the orientation front to back of the de any depressed fragments, and also where they're sitting. Uh, you can see on this in this case, you've got uh, it's sitting. Uh, there's, there's a bit of anterior cortex that's got, it's, it's kind of a bit more posterior, isn't it? A bit more posterolateral as opposed to anterolateral. That's the sagittal. And then I tend to go to the axial. Here's our axial, and you can start in the shaft of the feet, tibia, or you can start in up, up on the femur. But I, 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 for me, I've I started down, on the, I've down, on the, uh, down on, uh, in the shaft. Uh, here we go, we're just moving our way up. There's the shaft of the tibia, up we go. Coming up, this is the, this is the split here. You see it and coming up, there's the beginning of the depression coming in and there's the joint itself. What does the axial give us? Again, it shows us really nicely the exact part of the, of the, of the impacted bit. But for me, the real role of the axial is it shows you where the front door is. It shows you where the... Uh, the and, and, and sometimes the back door. And sometimes the back door. Exactly Don't forget right. the back door. <laughs> Don't forget the back door. Uh, in a Schatzka 2, the back door is less important, but in, in a bicondler, can be very, very relevant. It shows you the front door. Why do we want the front door? Because one of the techniques for reducing a, a Schatzka 2 is to open up the front door, to swing this guy out, whoop, out the side, to swing out the, uh, the, the, la the lateral uh, condyle on its posterior soft tissue hinge, climb inside the fracture, bring it up, and then close the door over the top. And that's very much this concept of open book versus contained defect. We're not here to talk about fixation. We'll do that in a separate video, but it certainly gives you an idea of how you're going to try and approach this fracture. Absolutely right. Uh, so that's what I get from the axial. Where is the front door? So the 3D recon is quite possibly my favorite view of all the CT slices. And the funny thing was when I was a trainee, we get bollocked for looking at these by the consultants. Yeah, you like, get told off. That's right. I think there is a certain snobbery associated with it, with the three D recons, and and some people, well, you should be able to get all you know from the from the AP and the, and the lateral radiograph, and then it was, well, you should be able to get everything you know from the from the three D recons, and now it's from from the from and the coronal I think medicine. it's probably because it wasn't it wasn't very good when they were training. It doesn't exist. Exactly. And eventually, yeah. you reach a point. Where you go, I'm, I refuse to take on any new knowledge. Yeah, that's I'm right. Yeah. These are brilliant. But the, the 3D recons are super helpful because you can like move around them, you can sub subtract bits of bone, and you and you can really almost climb inside the fracture. And and this is the, 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 the same fracture, same one, and you can move them around, of course. What do I actually get from the 3D recons? I must say, in a Schatzka 2 situation like this, I, I don't get a great deal uh, because um, I, I've kind of got everything I need from the other views. The, t the, the thing I find really helpful for 3D recons is where your plate's going to go, where the plate's going to sit. You can almost like lay the plate on in your mind's eye. And it's almost as if you've got a, uh, it's as good as almost having a 3D print of a model in front of you to look at. And it's, that's why it's good. And, and you, you can also see the bit that's, that you might need to key in. That's it. And you know your plate's going to sit up and down here, and that's, that's where it's going to go, uh, and, and it's, it's going to buttress back. You kind of knew that anyway, but when you get into the uh, by condola and, and Schatzka 4 type situation, knowing exactly where your plate goes is super helpful on these particular views. Great. So Great. that's CT analysis of a Schatzka 2. So here's, here's another CT and a uh, uh, different patient, same, uh, same fracture classification, but slightly different, different picture. Again, you've got your four views. And again, I'm going to kick off with the, uh, with the coronals. So here we go. You can see the bone quality here is not quite as good as the last one, and the fracture personality is also somewhat different. Look what happens as I scroll through. Look at the difference. It is, it's still a split. There's your split right there, uh, a postlateral split. As I come through, look at the quality of the bone. It's a slightly different flavor of depression. Yes, it's, yes there's a split. Yes, there's a depression. And yes, there is um, you know, some widening of the, of, of the, of the, of the condyle. But the depression is not the same. The, the, the other thing was the last one had large island of bone. I'd suggest that that's a piece there. 
there's a piece there, there's maybe a little piece there. And so this one is, is, is very much a different type of fracture. That's right. Uh, this and one is the one you're going to have to, once you've knocked it back up, you're going to have to recruit bone. Recruit bone. And where would you recruit bone from? Where would you, you get it from? So recruiting bone is a challenge because, but you want to take some with that. So realistically, you would probably in, try and recruit something from further down here. Absolutely. Yeah, and totally almost, agree. And bring that back up. Accepting, then you may leave a void there that you then you may need to fill if you can't support it and hold That's it. That's it. Yeah. So some kind of uh, a br a starting with your uh, starting with a, with a, an osteotome or what it, or, or punch or whatever it is, but coming starting right down here, maybe even right down here, and bringing that bone up underneath. And we're going to go into that in more detail in some of the further videos that we do about the surgical fixation. Yeah. But in order to get the information that you're talking about. Then the question that comes to my mind is, is, is there an access point? Is there a front door? Is there is a there front a door? So we need to see some of the other views to see that. Yeah. So on, on the sagittal view, uh, as we come through, there's the medial side, which looks normal. Beautiful. I've run through, here comes the notch. It, try and ignore the notch. Don't get too freaked out by him. Get through the notch into the lateral side. And this, again, you thought I, the, the lateral isn't, the sagittal isn't going to tell me anything, but actually it really does. It tells you where that depression is. It tells you whether it's anterior, whether it's posterior. Remember that last one? It was down in the middle. This one is down right at the front. And there it is, st stuffed right down at the front. So that's where your surgical attention needs to be. Uh, and you're getting the hint of a, a split just there for us. Yeah, you can see, see, the, see, the, okay. you can see the split right down here. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, good. Anything else you want to get from that? No, I can I can run through a little run through bit, a bit more, a little bit more. But but that's the, it's it's a it's an anterior uh, split depression here, isn't it? Yeah. And then we go through the axial just to check where that front door is. So here here's our here's our axial. We started down in the tibial shaft, and as I run up, you'll see uh, it's exactly where you expected it to be. But there it is. There's your anterolateral depression uh, sitting in right right in here. Uh, but there's the front door sitting waiting for you, uh, just right in there um, and that's a great spot to, um, to that's going to be as part of your anterolateral approach you will come down straight onto that and the one thing it is possible here that there is a uh, there is um, a cortex here that looks a bit more robust that you may be able to hinge open to get access to get an osteotome absolutely right i quite like using a laminar spreader and just to recruit the bone and hoik the whole thing up and then fix it in place then close the door back down uh, what i would say about the coronals is that uh, not only are you trying to um, not only are you trying to get this stuff up, you're also trying to get uh, this lateral condyle, this guy here, underneath the lateral femoral condyle. In other words, you want to tuck the rim underneath. If you just bring up the depression isn't necessarily enough. You've got to no. get the tibial width sorted out such that uh, there are now two resistances to valgus. There is both uh, the uh, depressed fragment, this guy here, which you've brought up, but there's also you've got your, you mean, uh, this guy here, which you brought in. That's yeah. it. Exactly. Okay. And now can we go to my favourite view? Go to your favourite view. But I, as, as ever, I say, I, you know, I'm, I'm always a, a bit of a believer that the, the recon doesn't give you a huge amount in the, in the, in the uh, Schatzka 2 situation. There's our split. You can see it really nicely. And if we just peek over the top, we can see that anterolateral depression just uh, sitting, uh, sitting right. Yeah, you can in, see the in, hole, in, right, in, see the hole the right in the middle there, can't you? And yeah. that's the thing. You're going to get your submeniscal arthrotomy, have a look at and get it reduced. Yeah, agreed. So there's that split there. So that that's going to join quite nicely. So I suggest you as you compress it. Yeah, you compress it. So you're going to you don't need to go around the back at all. You're going to get this all from the from the front. Of course. Yeah. So and then there are bits there that you think. So the key here is you can see where your access point is. There's your front door. Draw us the front door, Pete. Front door. Boom. Right there. And you can just open that up. Get something in there. Get elevate your surface and then put some rough KYs in. Fix yeah. it in place. Yeah. Um, and then go from there. Agreed. And I would say the big, uh, the most important technical point from fixing this is that when you bring your surface up, when you bring your, 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 your impacted surface back up, you want to go deep underneath it, not immediately underneath it. Yeah. So you're, as Cash quite absolutely right said, so you want to try and recruit some metaphyseal bone to stuff up underneath 
your depressed bone such that now it will hold a screw. And, and as we talked about one of the first um, talk, uh, videos that we did looking at x-rays, if you're going the raft screw on the lateral side, be careful, you may become out intra-articular on the medial side because the lateral uh, tibial plateau sits higher than the medial side. Yeah. So be shooting your screws on power, on, on, on IR. Where are you going to put your plate? Just draw us a plate on this. Oh, my, where's my plate going? Oh, yeah. he's just going on the side. I mean, he's going, he's going in the usual, usual spot. Boom, right down there. Yeah, boom, boom flip. Same, same. Can't place. go wrong. Can't go wrong. Send for the next. Cheers, buddy. Thank you.